Today's episode is going to be an exciting one. I've got some great action for you guys diving one of my favorite spots on the North Shore. And for all you beginners out there, there's a ton of little tips you can use as you dissect this video. So let's get started. Aloha guys, welcome back to another episode of Fish and Dive Hawaii and welcome to our very first episode of the new year. Happy New Year's everybody, welcome to 2020, welcome to a brand new decade. Hope you guys all have your New Year's resolutions set. I know a lot of people are against New Year's resolutions, but I think it's helpful, it gives people an extra motivation to pursue their goals and to tackle their goals and aspirations and for sure, I've got many goals on this channel, publishing more fishing episodes, spear fishing episodes, um, starting with this one. So let's jump in. So this dive right here actually happened a couple months ago. I was diving with Reno. You guys have seen that spear fishing vlog I did with him. Um, my buddy Gavin, he's been a long time supporter of our channel and Mike, my first time meeting him. I took them to one of my favorite spots on the North Shore. The weather was cooperating. The conditions were cooperating. So it was just a really fun time. So when we first jumped in, I don't know if you guys seen the last couple clips or are paying attention. Um, the water is pretty dirty, but as, as we swam further out, it started to get a lot cleaner. As you guys can tell, it's really, really clean right here. And I seen a big pile of fish in the front. Took a drop kind of behind this rock shelf and you guys can see all of that. Um, all of those little awamas and all those other schools of fish. And I know there's going to be uhus and other good game fish hiding kind of in the back. You guys see some of the munus right there those um joes or goldfish um so i'm trying to stalk them kind of calling them in and seeing what i can land so usually when i'm stalking a big pile of fish um, and it's fairly flat reef. I try to find at least some kind of structure where I can get behind and still be able to track the fish and see if they're coming in. So I picked this nice big rock right here. I'm gonna have my gun kind of in a position where I can fire it if I need to, um, but I'm gonna be hiding behind this rock and it's gonna help um, let the fish become more curious and hopefully come in more. So I finished recording last night, wanted to finish the video this morning, um, and I woke up with a little bit of a cold, so if I sound under the weather, um, then that's the reason why. But on this drop, I moved a little bit closer than that rock structure, it was a little bit further away from the pocket where the fish were hiding. So because this doesn't have any obvious structures I can hide behind, I have to pull myself a little bit closer to the reef, but um, yeah, I'm gonna try to scratch, call some fish in, and I'll notice a kumu up on my left side. You guys will see in just a second. Um, it's gonna, I'm gonna see the tail of it right here, the left corner. And then I'm gonna point my gun at it, try to land it. So right there, top left, get readjust my gun, try to lead the shot. And I thought I led it pretty well, but I'm gonna slow motion it for you guys right here. So I led the shot, but I think the fish was just a little, moving a little bit too slow for um, for how far I was trying to lead it in advance. So if I waited just a little bit longer or maybe not have led it as far, I probably would have landed it. So when I say pocket where the fish were hiding, this is it right here. I was kind of getting fed up. So I just went straight inside the pocket, seeing this nice moon, which is another type of goat fish, take the shot right here and I was able to land it. And that's usually the sequence I would work in if there's a fish pile in a little pocket, as I would say, or like a lower part of the reef try to go on the outside of that try to find a structure like i did to hide behind try to bring that fish closer to you um, and if not you can always work your way closer and closer to eventually you might have to take a drop inside of the pocket and luckily it worked out for me on this drop and at this particular dive spot there's a lot of different species of parrot fish i think there's seven in Hawaii I'm not too sure but I'm pretty sure there's seven this is a different type of uhu than the ones that we're used to talking about the pananu the whiptail the fantail so 
Um, with those ones, they're a little bit smaller, and I try not to shoot them unless they're like a really good size. So that one was a little on the smaller side. So as I'm working back towards that reef where there was a nice size goldfish, I landed that Munu, and then I seen that Kumu. I decided to go with one band to try to um, bring the fish a little bit closer. Whenever I choose to use one band, it almost changes my mindset and how I approach the fish because I want them to come in close enough where I can take an accurate shot. So there's another big Kumu right there, another good size Kumu. Um, and it just didn't come close enough where I felt comfortable taking the shot and not having it rip off. And a reason why this is one of my favorite spots is that there's a deep channel or kind of like a trench that runs 200 yards offshore parallel to the beach. And anytime you have a deep body of water close to shore, you have an opportunity to run into bigger game fish that's utilizing that channel to work along like trevallis, like the papillos, luas, like jobfish, like ukus, mu, which is the emperor eye. You have an opportunity to kind of get into that next tier of fish to target because you're in shallower water that's met with deep water. And as I'm working the channel, here's a nice little whole new or green sea turtle, which I always was taught that was a good sign because there won't be sharks in the area, but I don't know the exact validity of that. Um, right here on this little flat piece of reef, you can see that fish right there in the center. If you rewind a little bit, you'll be able to see a fish there. And that's a knife jaw, which is usually a rare fish to catch. They're really good eating, especially eating it raw sashimi style. And when I was trying to target it, Usually they're pretty tame, but this one was kind of just, you know, checked me out for a little bit, went into his little hole and never came out. And here I finally reached my favorite spot to dive at this location, which is, you remember how I was mentioning that the channel runs parallel to the beach? Well, there's a point where it shoots straight out perpendicular, and right in that corner, if you can imagine an L shape, in that corner, there's a lot of fish that congregate here for some reason. I've always gotten lucky. So when you approach a channel like this and you take a drop, you can do two things. You can take a drop straight down and look up towards the shallow reef, which is what I'm doing right here, trying to see some uhus. You can kind of see some in the distance that aren't coming in. Or you can take the drop and look down towards the trench and see what kind of fish is kind of hanging out over there, which is what I'm doing right here. So the depth at this particular spot of where I'm taking a drop into is about 25 to 30 feet. And you can see I find this nice little pocket of reef with some nice structure I can hide behind. And what I really like is this big rock on the right side of me. Whenever I see something like this where I can look through it and stick my gun out. So I'm pretty much hiding my body, hiding my mask and my snorkel. <laughs> but the fish is able to still come in and get curious. So I'm going to be dusting and kind of shaking my hand. I see a nice little predator fish on the outside, which is a wahanui or a small tooth job fish. They don't get as big as uhus, but I can tell for this type of species, that's a really big one. So I noticed that on the outside, he's not going anywhere. And that's something I can target in the next drop. So as I was breathing up, looking down at the spot I was just at, I noticed a big uhu and a couple other smaller ones kind of coming in a little bit. So you guys see this big hole in this rock. This is perfect. This is what I like to look for when I'm spearfishing. I can stick my gun through, make a shot, and it allows the fish to get curious. So you see this big blue uhu coming right here. I take the shot, able to land it. I'm going to let my gun go because if you guys haven't watched my channel before, Uhus or parrotfish have really tender, soft meat. So if you try to pull it, it can rip the rip the shaft right out, and you're gonna lose the fish. The fish is gonna die in a hole somewhere. So I let the gun go so it can pull the tension, and then I keep it real smooth. Try to grab the other end of the shaft to help secure the fish because this was kind of a poor shot placement. But I'm able to bring the fish, land it, super stoked. And man, anytime I land a blue uhu. It's just amazing. Like it's such a beautiful fish and it tastes so good. I mean, it's just really incredible. Only only in Hawaii do you get something like this. 
And understand guys, I do not advocate on just harvesting blue uhus when you're targeting parrotfish. For those of you guys who have been watching my channel the last couple of years, this is only the second blue uhu I've shot, I think. So the reason behind it, for those of you guys who don't know, is that there's only one male per pod. Um, so when you take out the blue uhu, another female has to transition into a male, which is a process that takes several years. So if you have the shot on the red uhu, please take it. But it is legal to shoot blue uhus unless you live on Maui. But I always advocate to take the reds over the blues if you have that shot. So this is my fourth drop in the same location. Like I said, there's a lot of fish that congregate here. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because it's in the, in the corner where the shallow reef is of this little channel. But a lot of fish hang out here. As you guys seen, that hole is where I shot the blue uhu in last time. But I want to target the wahanui, the predator fish this time. Like I said, guys, a lot of predator fish hang out on this channel. And you can tell wahanui from an uku based on its color. It's a little bit more of a blackish bullet gray type of color with some orange fins like i said they don't get as big as the ukus but i'm using hand gestures that i see a lot of divers use which i think mimics like a squid or something but you, you can tell it's going to come in from the distance and out of my corner my field of vision on the right side a papil swims straight up to me and i take the shot right there good size one it's pulling my line all the way down um, so I'm just going to let my gun go. I'm not going to follow up the shot because obviously for safety reasons, I don't want to swim further down than I already am. So I'm going to go back up, recover a little bit, take a drop again, and try to land it. And you guys seen right there, that was one of our dive buddies, Bowie's. He's He was kind of diving alongside me, which is smart because if we're diving a little bit deeper water like we are right now um, versus the shallower reef where we can kind of all spread out and hit different grounds, um, it's good to look out for each other when you're diving a little bit deeper water. So on that second drop, I couldn't recover the shaft, so I went up to recover again. This is my third drop. I'm going to pull the shaft out. And you guys will see one of the main reasons why I love spearfishing is you just see crazy cool stuff like this. I mean, look at this silhouette of the sun and the deep water and the fish right there. It just doesn't get any better than this. One of the reasons why I love spearfishing is... You can see stuff that you don't see every day and some people don't see it in their whole life and it's just it's wonderful you know so this is a papilla right here it's about three pounds i'd say three pounds on the heavier side which is perfect to pan fry you can cut it up in sashimi or you can cut it up and make little fish nuggets which is always good it's my wife's favorite so yeah omilu bluefin trevally beautiful fish it's been an excellent day so far in the water and normally i'd put the cooking section all together in one video but i haven't shared a spearfishing episode in a while and i know you guys really enjoy them so i just wanted to put this out there but in part two we're trying a brand new recipe with the uhu that you guys can try and is actually recommended by one of our subscribers and followers and it came out really bomb so really excited to share that but i don't know if you guys remember a couple months ago i did an episode talking about the perfect spear gun size which is a 90 centimeter especially as beginners which is what I use exclusively today. So I just wanted to prove to you guys that it can be done with a 90 centimeter gun that rhymed. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Shoots mahalo. See you later. Bye-bye.